This is Journey over here. I'm over on the other side. All right? All right. So Journey's setup is here. They're using a console by Avid Pro Tools Company. And his equipment is over here, his computer and stuff. So he's doing almost everything in the computer and in the console. Okay. This is where the system technician stands, and he controls the entire PA. And there's zones all over the place. You can see speakers there, 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 there. there. Subwoofers are flown in the center above the stage. Oh, I see. And then across the front or front fills. And he controls every three boxes, two to three boxes, with different EQs because you have to, to throw it further, you have to turn up more high end because high end doesn't travel as far as low end. All right, so this is his control system. And both of our consoles go into this master switcher here, right? And so he can just unmute me and I'm ready to go. This is my side. And I'm a little more uh, computer oriented. I got Pro Tools over here. So uh, then over here, I got my, all my control for my system. So this is my analysis program, my, my spectrum analyzer. And then this is my EQ for the system. And then back here is all my reverbs. Every song has different reverbs, right? Make sure you turn off analog. And so that's the whole set list here. And whenever I recall a scene on this console, it changes the scene over here also. I see. So it's just MIDI, MIDI patch changing. Oh, it's um, main stage. Yeah, yeah, it's main stage. And uh, so down here I have some analog pieces because I'm old. I, oh yes, I see you've got your Avalons and your yeah, distressors. Of analog, uh, Avalons for the lead vocals, this is for Luke and for Joe. And then over here is my, uh, my distressors, one's on the bass and one's on another one of the vocalists. And then this is a stereo, it's like a SSL compressor. Uh, it's by Smart Logic, and it's, it's called um, uh, C2, Smart C2. And uh, then everything, all of this, the console and both of these computers are screen shared on my iPad. Right, so you can walk around and mix, correct? I can walk around and mix, or I can control both roles. I can do anything that's on this computer, all on my iPad, and it's pretty slick. And back here... Here's my setup. So this is all my patching, and I designed it so it just pulls apart very quickly. Everything boom, boom, and then these come up and they all fold into the desk. I can right, they're all color-coded. Yep, and I can be out of here in five minutes. The reason I use color coding is because it's easier to see if you made a mistake. There's my antenna and my reference mic. That's about it. That's my rig. And then back there is another setup, very similar to Oh, for the, uh, uh, in a, your monitors. That's my monitor engineer, his name is Steve. And um, he does exactly the same thing for me, except his job is, he has the mix for all the musicians, and I have the mix for the audience. So the way the console laid out is you come over to a layout, and you open a channel list, and you just start making an input list. And then these are all of your microphone patches. There's a rack on the stage, and these are just straight, one, two, 64. And so that's all the inputs for my show. These are technicians' talkback mics, there's audience mics, there's uh, extra mics, like I'll have one input, maybe he's playing tenor, alto, and soprano, have three different EQs and compressors for the different instruments. Uh, my reverb returns and everything. So you put everything in here first, right? You get your whole input lined up, and then you can move. Good. Got three more. Fix that. Ah, so, uh, fixed. yeah. So, oh, that's the click actually. That should not be on. Neither one of those should be on. I made a mistake. So the click track only goes to the drummer's ears, and we don't want anybody else to hear it. The audience. So how many tunes use click? I'm sorry. All the tunes click on click to start off with. Yeah, so that way he can have the tempos right for all the delays. Oh, I see. So they're like the, the first 16 bars or something. Yeah, they don't cut it off usually. Um, and then so the desk. Once you have this, 
you can take any any bank of these faders, right? These are all just different layers, right? Of this input list. So this will be the drums, this will be the band. The rest of the drums are over here. The vocals are over here. And I just set up the desk. You can lay out the desk any way you want. You just say, oh, I want to put something in this space over here. And you say a sign. You pick a fader. And you can put something there. Right? So now that fader is there in that thing. So that way you can customize the desk any way you want. So that's this section of the desk. And this section. Those are my inputs. This section is outputs. So that's, these are my master control groups, my DCAs. These are my effect sins, which go into my reverb unit over there. Right? And then these are my subgroups of instruments. I have everything, which everything ends up going into the master that goes out to speakers. But then I have separate subgroups of different instruments for different reasons, right? I have a crush track that if I really want to slam the drums with compression, I can. I haven't been using that. Uh, and then I have uh, my outputs. And this is a matrix output, it's called. And you can take and you can feed anything in. This is a matrix. Right. Okay? So a matrix has both uh, inputs right so you select your input here so this is coming from the master right the master bus that's this master fader over here and to send that to the pa instead of just sending this fader to the pa i send it into this matrix and there's my master coming in and if you follow down there's the left right of my right. pa gotcha. and so here's my left right the next set here is my, my shouts, which are the people talking on stage, right? And then I have my solo bus, so I can put my solo, whenever I solo anything, just out my speakers, not coming out the PA. So that's my inputs and outputs. Right, but you don't have speakers set up today like you did the other day. They're in this board, right? That's the whole thing, it's kind of simple. Yeah, simple for you. And every channel script has all of these things on it, so let's go to our blank, right. our blank one we just made, right? So this is a this is my input section. That's where you set the mic pre, and you can set delay, and you can add a little distortion, and you can decide if it's going to be a mono or stereo channel, and all that kind of stuff. The next is your high pass and low pass filters up there. It's under the EQ. High pass, low pass. Those are these knobs. Then you have your EQ here. All right. You can grab it and pull it around. You have to turn it on first. Grab it and pull it around. Okay. So that's an EQ. Then over here, you have a compressor. This compressor can be a regular compressor, it can be a multiband, or it can be a de-esser. Okay. Then there's a second one underneath that can be a gate or a ducker or a compressor. Right. So that's on one channel skip, right? So besides that, if you look over here, there's another set of identical things over here. So you have two. These are more analog sounding. This is called the mustard strip. And so I can have tube saturation that's got all these different types of saturation and harmonics. I can have, uh, I can have EQ that's got an all-pass filter into it, built into it if I want to. Um, I can have more compression. This has like real different types, vintage and optical and all the kinds you study in your class, right? So it's got all the four compressors there. And, and that's about it. So it's got two sides. This, this is the more advanced one of these consoles. So it has an analog type sounding thing and a digital sounding. And the way that I run my, my signal thing is I do my coloring things first. So like I'll put my compressors that are colored like my LA-2A, right. or my things that change things tonally and add saturation and tonal changes, those go first, and then you do your, uh, your tonal EQs, right? and then you're going to do your, uh, your compression that's going to be only for correction, like a de -esser. or if you have a frequency jumping out on an instrument, you add that, then last you can, uh, then you do another EQ, which is your correctional EQ, then you do your multi -band. And so that's my signal chain for life.